Good evening all, and welcome. Are strange things going on in your home? If so, you may be suffering from poltergeists or ghosts. Be warned, your house being haunted is never a good thing, and can have frightening and terrifying consequences. So get ready, because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. When I moved into our current house, I was around eight. This was back in 05. I remember that we had this boring and very ugly front door. It was doubly annoying because the mechanism that locks the door in place was broken. You could continuously spin the doorknob in either direction and have it not open. So we took the mechanism out and you would just need to push or pull the door in order to get it open. Now, I was about to head upstairs when I noticed that the doorknob was spinning. I pulled open the door to see who was on the other side and there was no one. I closed the door and was about to turn around again when the doorknob continued to spin. This was only possible if someone was manually turning it. I opened the door once more and there was no one on the other side. I stared at it in wonder when the door flew off its hinges and pushed my head into the corner of the wall. It split my head open, and I had to stay for several days at the hospital for a severe concussion. I told my parents that I just fell while holding onto the door when they asked me about it, because I knew that they wouldn't have believed me anyway. We had to replace the whole door frame, which we have today. Another story happened around four or five years later and involved my brother and I. Around when I was about 12, me and my brother were hanging out in the office room in our house. It was about 3am when we heard a bell. Not just any bell, but a tricycle bell. Just think of an average bike bell. We freaked the hell out because we were the only two in the house at the time. We looked around the house to not find a thing. The next night, I was alone in the office around the same time when I heard the small bell. I, scared out of my mind, used my glass cup as a makeshift weapon to defend myself as I patrolled around the house. When I got to the kitchen, the tricycle that I had when I was eight, that we sold at a garage sale before we moved into the current house, rolled across the floor. No one was downstairs at the time to roll it, or ring the bell for that matter. We still have the tricycle somewhere. Another story. So my mother works a maximum security prison. There was an inmate that tried to hang himself. She was walking in on him, and she pulled him down and performed CPR. She ended up getting his heart to start again, but the damage was already done. The man was brain dead. This traumatized her pretty bad, and she got minor PTSD from it. It was bad enough that she needed therapy. Fast forward about a year or so after the event, stuff started happening around the house. Papers would come flying out of our printer, objects would fall over on their shelves, and the TV would turn on and off at random times. These events escalated until one night my mother woke up with her arm in pain. She looks over, and her husband is laying on her arm. She says, Hey, wake up. You're on my arm. My stepfather nudges her arm some more. What the hell? Get off my arm. 
Now mind you, my mother had surgery on her arm in the past, and it's incredibly painful even to this day. So, she is in a lot of pain. She tries to push him off her, when she finally says, Get off my arm, you're hurting me. At this point, my stepfather opens his eyes and turns over, so that all of his weight is pinning my mother's arm down. Except, it wasn't my stepfather. This man had a tomato red face, black eyes, and a toothy smile that stretched to either ends of his face to his ear. Good. My mother proceeded to flip out and start crying to stop and that she was terrified and to get off her arm. My mother eventually pries her arm out from under this intruder and runs downstairs. She wakes the kids up and takes them into the living room to prepare to call 911. My stepdad comes down to the living room, except he is himself. He is wondering what the hell is going on, and my mother is screaming, get out of my house, stay away from me and stay away from the kids. It was pretty intense. Eventually, my mother saw that it was actually my stepdad and calmed down. It was around this point that she decided it was probably time that they got outside help. So they called my step-grandfather. My step-grandfather's wife has a brother, that is, a retired priest, and he currently lives somewhere in Mexico. By calling my step-grandpa, they got his contact info, and invited him up to the States as a sort of consultant. He ended up flying up and listening to our story. He ended up saying that he heard of paranormal things happening to people in his line of work, but never to the extent that it was happening to us. He ended up giving us the contact information of a female pastor that travels around and deals with this stuff. He described her to us as someone who was especially sensitive to paranormal phenomena. He told us to just call her, tell her that he referred her to us, and to invite her over. Nothing more. He was specific about not telling her anything about what was happening, and that, as soon as she steps foot into the house, she'll immediately start to spout off stuff about your house's history, people who have died there and the like. So we give her a call. My mother followed the priest's instructions, and as they were saying their goodbyes, my pastor starts yelling, Stop! Someone is trying to talk to you. She's extremely angry. She wants me to tell you that you moved it, and she wants you to put it back where it was, right now. And then she hung up. So, it just happened that my family was having a garage sale at the time. We moved some of the more useless stuff to the basement. One of these were these dolls. Now, these weren't just any dolls. These were vintage dolls from when my great-grandma was a girl, before she passed away. She was extremely adamant about my mother inheriting them. She was definitely the type of person to get angry over something like moving her possessions somewhere. As soon as the pastor hung up, she knew exactly what the pastor was talking about, and moved the dolls. Now, the thing with the pastor didn't quite work out. On the day that she was supposed to visit, the pastor forgot our address and phone number, and looked on her phone to contact us, except all of our contact information was erased. We ended up calling her later that day, gave her our number and address again, and she said that she was more than willing to still come over. At this point, she got into her car, and it wouldn't start. She called a towing company to try and get to the shop, so that it could be fixed, except the tow truck got into an accident on the way over to her house. Suffice to say, these were a coincidentally, or maybe not, long string of bad luck. 
so she was never able to come out. So since that didn't work out, we went to a different source for help. We called a paranormal investigation company that is local to our area. It was an interesting experience, to say the least. They came over and spent the night. They split up into groups and investigated a different part of my house. They had cameras, and these recorders that supposedly picked up on super low frequencies. One of the things that they caught floating somewhere in our oh, guest room, as well as several orbs. They found a whole bunch of stuff on the voice recorders, and they interviewed, or so they say, four different entities. They identified a young girl, an older teenager, and a woman by the name of Lorelei, and a man named Frank. Now this caught my mother's attention, because it just so happened that the man that my mother resuscitated was called Frank. Upon more investigation, the man said that he liked my mother and hated my stepfather. That was about all that happened with that. For a while, the paranormal investigators became kind of famous within their community because they got a lot of evidence. So around this time is when I took some leave from the Navy and came back home. It was very quiet while I was there except for one night. I was sitting in the living room reading, when I felt like someone was watching me. It got so bad that I actually went outside with a flashlight and started looking through bushes because I was convinced that someone was stalking me. It ended up being nothing, and the feeling went away after a couple of hours. Fast forward to a couple of months ago, my uncle's childhood best friend, that we hadn't talked to in many years, stopped by for a barbecue. He had a new girlfriend. As soon as my family friend and his girlfriend stepped through the door, the woman stopped abruptly and asked my mother, How many do you have? My mother said, I have five children. Four are from me and the other is a stepdaughter. No, that's not what I meant. My mother said, uncertainly, we have four ghosts. A little girl, a teenager, a woman and a man. No, you have at least two men. Because I have two brutes that are currently screaming in my face and telling me to get out. My mother and her had a very long conversation. Now, I would take what I'm about to tell you with a grain of salt. As soon as my mother told me this, I said, No way. That's the most tall-tailed bullcrap I've ever heard. But you never know. Maybe I'm wrong. The woman told my mother that she's always had the ability to see ghosts all of her life, among other things, such as telekinetic abilities. She used to shatter light bulbs above her mother's head when she was a little girl. One day, her teacher was being mean to her. The next thing you know, the teacher is being lifted up off the air and pinned against the wall by some invisible force. She told us that she was then taken away by the government and had experiments performed on her to try and replicate the event. She said the government hadn't had contact with her in some time. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that last part. But Hull's sensitivity thing was obviously pretty consistent with our experiences. Something else that she told us was that the whole land around us was still haunted as hell. She said that the neighbours across from us have nothing less than an infestation, and she had never seen anything like it. She ended up leaving, and all of the paranormal events stopped. She later contacted my mother and mentioned that the two men that were shouting at her left with her, because they found out that she could see and hear them. They started messing with her by hiding her stuff under her bed and knocking things over. She told us that she could get rid of them though, and since then it's been quiet. 
No problems except for this one time that my mother was alone in her room. When the spring door stopper started randomly vibrating side to side. Not in the, oh, there must be a big truck that just shook the house kind of way. More the, this was someone pulling that thing to its full range of motion and letting it go, as if someone was playing with it. My mother remembered the little girl ghost that was at the house and said, I know you're there, honey. It's okay if you want to play a bit. You can stay here as long as you're not mean. And that was that. I am definitely a skeptic. But one experience I had house setting for my aunt and uncle definitely raises some questions for me. They were going out of town for a weekend and asked if I would keep an eye on the house and take care of their dogs while they were away. I was staying with my grandparents for the summer, as I usually did, and being a 16 year old with a brand new driver's license, I jumped at the chance for a few days of freedom with a house to myself during my summer vacation. I picked up my PlayStation, rented some games and movies and stocked up on snacks and headed over to their place. The first night there was uneventful, but I remember feeling slightly uneasy being in the house. Nothing out of the ordinary was going on. I just attributed the uneasiness to being in the house alone for the first time, without my aunt or uncle there. Around 1am, I decided to go to bed and let the dogs out in the backyard to relieve themselves before bed. After they were done, I made sure everything was locked doing the deadbolt and chain locks on the doors. I woke up the next morning, put some coffee on and got the dogs up to let them out. The uneasiness remained. I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched, even though I knew that no one else was around. After breakfast, I decided I was going to go for a bike ride and meet up with some friends. I put the dogs into their crates, locked up, and headed out. I was gone for maybe four hours until mid-afternoon, when I decided to head back to the house. When I walked in, the dogs were freaking out. Not your normal, happy to see you let me out the crate excitement, but full-blown panic, shaking and foaming at the mouth and howling the works. These dogs are normally very calm and are perfectly content to spend most of the day in their crates, sleeping, as they go in on their own for naps. So this was really out of the ordinary. I opened the doors to their crates, but neither of them wanted to come out. Being a little freaked out myself at this point, I decided to check the house to make sure nothing had happened. All the windows were fine, everything was still locked and the house was completely empty. At this point, I should mention how the house is laid out. It's an old house, late 1800s, and prior to my aunt and uncle owning it, it was divided up as a duplex. The upstairs was a separate apartment. They mentioned that an older woman had rented the upstairs while the previous owners lived downstairs. My aunt and uncle didn't rent the upstairs but didn't really do anything to convert the house back into a single family dwelling. My uncle used the upstairs apartment as his home office with several computers and a couple of modems, early 2000s dial up. And most of the time, the door to the upstairs in the enclosed porch off the kitchen just stayed closed and locked. There wasn't really any reason to go up there. I decided in an abundance of caution, since the dogs were so freaked out that I should check the whole house. I unlocked the door to the upstairs and went up to check. I noticed that one of the computers was on. This was odd, as my uncle had said in his note that he'd shut off everything upstairs and unplugged the surge protectors. 
Maybe he meant to do so, but got into a rush to get out the doors and forgot. No big deal. We were expecting storms later, so I shut the computer down, unplugged everything, and went back downstairs, locking the door behind me. By this point, the dogs had calmed down and taken their usual spots on the couch, where I joined them to play some PlayStation. After dinner at around 8pm, the dogs and I were still on the couch watching movies and just chilling out, when all of a sudden, one of the dogs stands up on the couch with all of the fur on his back standing on end, and begins growling towards the direction of the door to the stairs. He continued to do this for the next 5-10 to 10 minutes, and nothing I did would distract him from whatever he was sensing. He eventually calmed down and laid beside me again. A few hours later at 11pm, he resumed this, and the other dog joined in too this time. That's when I began to hear creaking coming from upstairs, like someone stepping on a loose floorboard. It didn't sound like footsteps, just like someone rocking back and forth on the loose boards. Properly freaked out now, I went to investigate. This time I noticed that the door to the upstairs was now unlocked. I had locked it when I went up there earlier. Oh crap, someone might be in the house. I took a few steps back into the kitchen and grabbed a knife. You know, like a horror movie cliche. I checked the porch door to the backyard, which would be where someone would come into to get into the upstairs apartment. It was still locked. Okay, weird. The creaking upstairs was still happening. I opened the doors to the stairs and it stopped immediately. I turned the lights on and ascended. Nothing. I was freaking out over nothing. It was probably just the house settling. It was, after all, an old house. These things creaked and groaned all the time. A little embarrassed with myself for getting so freaked out, I went back downstairs again, locking the door behind me. I decided to get some sleep, popped in another movie, curled up on the couch and passed out. I was awoken at 2am a few hours later, to the dogs again in full-blown panic mode. This time I could hear them creaking again, and then something else happened. I heard a dial tone. I heard a modem upstairs dial some numbers. I heard it try to connect. Was I still asleep? No, I was definitely awake. I again grabbed the knife, went to the upstairs door, unlocked it, and opened the door. And the noises immediately no wood, again I cut off. No wood, I went upstairs again to check. Nothing. Everything was still off and unplugged just as I had left it. I went back downstairs, locked everything up, and went to try and calm the dogs down. About ten minutes later, I heard the modem start up again. It would dial, try to connect, stop, and then dial again, and again, and again. The creaking was back too, and this time it did sound like someone was walking around up there, even though I knew I was alone and had checked every conceivable place in the house for an intruder to hide. I put up with this for another half hour or so, and it didn't let up. The dogs wouldn't calm down either. Eventually I'd had enough. I grabbed the dogs, loaded them into my car, and got the hell out of there. I went back to my grandparents' place, and stayed with them for the rest of the night with the dogs. The next morning my grandparents were surprised to see me there and asked what had happened. I relayed the previous night's events to them, feeling like a crazy person for what I had experienced. Strangely, they didn't seem surprised at all. They then told me that was the first time something strange happened there, and that my aunt and uncle had all kinds of stories about the place. For example, my little cousin frequently woke up screaming that a shadow man was looking at him in his bed and my uncle going upstairs to work on his computers one day, and discovering that the gas stove had turned on, 
leaking gas into the house, and all kinds of things had been misplaced, or doors left unlocked. I still don't think I believe in the paranormal, and consider myself an agnostic atheist, but I still can't find a reasonable explanation for what happened, and what I experienced that weekend. It was all too weird. My BFF, myself, and a mutual best friend rented a super old, I think in the early 1900s, house, situated perfectly on the edge of the bad part of town, the college only part of town, and on the way to the good part of town. So it was heavily trafficked by classmates and a big party place. BFF is super into paranormal stuff, but not weird about it. Very level-headed. Think raised in rural Appalachia and all the folklore that goes along with it. Our mutual best friend wasn't heavily oriented either way, but pretty open to that sort of stuff. I was an avid denier, despite having a few unexplainable experiences in the past. The knocking started happening pretty much immediately, but none of us figured it out for about a month, because we thought it was just happening to us individually. Like one of us would be in our bedroom, or the bathroom, it was especially likely in the bathroom door, and any door leading out of my mutual best friend's room. For whatever reason, it never happened with any exterior doors, and there'd come a knock on the door. We would shout, come in, or who is it? To no answer, just another knocking. Always loud and formal, like three perfectly timed knocks. You would call, come in, or whatever, as long as you liked. There would never be any answer, and never anyone actually there. I thought it was my roommates just screwing around, or old house stuff. I don't know. I was 22. And the others initially thought variations of the same thing. Then, we were sitting around smoking a bowl one night. And my best friend forever brings up the knockings, explaining what's been going on. And we all look around at each other, that kind of holy crap, you too, moment, and we all swapped stories. We laughed, because it didn't really feel super threatening with all of us just chatting about it. My BFF suggests paranormal. Mutual best friend kind of laughs it off and says, maybe, and I flat out dismiss it, because no way, and we go on. It keeps happening, Mostly randomly, but it's happening now when other people are actually on the other side of doors. So it's not a hundred percent just random hallucinations passing back and forth. On the night it got really overt, BFF and I were just sitting on the couch watching TV. MBF in his bedroom, with doors shut. One of his bedroom doors went directly into the bathroom one directly into the living room, where my BFF and I were watching TV, and a third directly into my bedroom. Think sort of circular layout with doors going through common areas, but also connecting sleeping areas. So BFF and I are in the living room and can see the shut bedroom door of the mutual best friend, as well as the open bathroom door from the common area. We can clearly see that no one is in the bathroom, and can clearly see the mutual best friend's bedroom door. Suddenly, the mutual best friend shouts, Come in! Although we didn't hear knocking. But that often happened. Only the person responding was actually hearing the noise. BFF and I share a glance, giggle, and go to hit the bowl again. When we hear, come in, loud and angry, 
from the room. Okay, fair enough. It gets aggravating after a while, but clearly there is no one at the other door, so we don't know why he's bothering to get louder. I'm opening my mouth to shout something smart while looking at my BFF. And I remember this part super clearly because it was surprising. When there's a huge bang, like something heavy had been dropped from a long way in the mutual best friend's bedroom, and it startled us both badly. Then, less than a second later, he comes flying out the door, nearly ripping the door off its hinges, and races into the living room with us and he stopped at the opposite wall, breathing really heavily, eyes way too wide, and is staring at us scared to death. We are equally alarmed from the first noise, then from the look he's giving us, and then his room. We're almost shouting at him to explain what happened, and he said he got annoyed because the knocking was coming from both doors, from the bathroom and from the living room. And he went to jerk open the bathroom door, but when he started to pull on it, it yanked out of his hand and closed, like way harder than should have been possible. And that was the noise. It also scared him into nearly pissing himself, so he bolted. The knocking continued randomly throughout the rest of our time in the house. Guests would hear it and respond all the time. Eventually, most people who were at our place more than once a week knew the story, and our advice was pretty universal. Not to respond to it, but to walk to the doors and open them instead. This wasn't anything clever. We just got super tired of people shouting come in from different rooms all of the time. The baby stuff. These ones had a lot more feel of something possibly sentient, or... I don't know. More symbolism or something than knocking. It's hard to explain. Hopefully it'll make more sense once I've got the story told. But these stories feel a lot more like stereotypical ghost movie behaviour than some of the other creepier stuff that was more obtuse or random. So again, this stuff started happening almost at once. But we didn't realise it because we thought it was legitimate, or that it was just any single of us being mistaken or possibly being high or crazy. It always happened when anyone was laying down, and I never heard it in another place or time. Here's mine. I was laying down midday, about to take a power nap, and heard a baby crying. It sounded very close, right outside the house perhaps. I went into my BFF's room, as it's right beside mine, and it sounded like it was coming from there. I listened, and still sounded right outside, like the window. I looked out of it, and heard it clearly, but there was no source. There was a house right next to us, but the windows were down, and it sounded super clear. Still. I chalked it up to a loud baby and weird acoustics and thought nothing of it. It happened a few more times and kept being weird because it was so clear and more during the day than the night. But I still chalked it up to the neighbours having a very loud baby. I spoke to the BFF about it one afternoon in passing and she looks and says that she's noticed it too. It's so weird because it sounds so close, and agree that it is weird, and forget about it, because what are we going to do about it? We speak to the mutual best friend. This convo was a bit later than the big scary knocking incident, so he's understandably less dismissive of the weird stuff now, and he agrees he's heard it, so really didn't care to check about it. A few days later, he returns and lets us know he passed the neighbours, who we hadn't met or cared to because we were 22, sitting on their porch, to find out that they were three fairly elderly African-American gentlemen with no baby in sight. Mutual best friend paused to ask 
if they had a baby around or often, and if they heard a baby crying during the day. The men give adamant refusals to both questions. So, my BFF and mutual best friend at this point are feeling fairly crazy overall. She's sure it's a ghost, or multiple, but the mutual best friend is sure it's something. I'm mostly annoyed, but also I'm not a total idiot, so I'm admitting that something is weird. So we start asking people who spend a lot of time in the house, close friends, dealers, buyers, significant others, and people allowed to chill at our spot between classes if they're having any of these experiences. Turns out that most of them had heard the baby crying, mostly during the day, and always when they're laying down on the couch or in a bed. Whatever. But no one ever heard it, initially while they were up and about. We circle the house inside and out a dozen times while we hear it with different people and different times trying to pinpoint where it was coming from. The best way to describe it was if you were standing in my BFF's bedroom. It sounded as if it was just on the other side of the exterior wall to the house. If you went to the exact spot of the house outside, it sounded like the crying was coming from just the other side inside my best friend's room. That's where it was loudest and no one else could detect it coming any more strongly from any other direction. Weird as hell. I lived in four creepy and haunted houses. They all had some pretty horrifying things, but the third one was the scariest. I was in high school when me, my mum and stepdad lived there. I moved in with them when I was 15. My mum had married him a few months before. Anyway, one night, I noticed the doorknob on my bedroom door was shaking. Like, horribly shaking. It was locked, though. I thought maybe it was like a train, but it kept happening. I thought that maybe it was my stepdad being a creep. I didn't know him very well at that point. So I started leaving it unlocked to try and see if it was him trying to get in. It would still just shake. Then it happened. Day, night, any time I shut the door. Sometimes I would get up at night to get a snack. Since I have had a hard time sleeping since I was a kid. I'd hear footsteps behind me or the floor creaking. It was a really small house too. And no one else was up. There's not anywhere to hide. I'd feel my shirt tugged sometimes too, just at the bottom of it, like a little kid would do when they want attention. The scariest two things are one morning. It was winter and around 6am or so, so still dark outside, and I was in the living room watching TV and getting ready for school. My stepdad was in the back of the house in his room sleeping and my mum was heading out the front door to work, and she turned around and said bye to me. And we hear this little girl's voice clear as day say, Goodbye. My mum looked at me and I screamed, and her husband comes running up, asking what happened. And my mum told him, and then was like, Well, note to this, bye, and left. Then, the last scary thing, was that our neighbour, whose backyard connected to ours, but they lived around the corner, came over to yell at my mum one day, saying that she's a crappy mum for letting our little sister out all night and play on the swing. We had a rope tied to a tree that no one ever used, and my youngest sister lived in another town with my dad, and so my mum was really confused. The neighbour said, she would go out for a smoke at night and would see a little girl swinging on the rope and laughing. And she'd see it multiple times when she went out. My aunt works at the city and did research, saying that our house had been moved from another location. It was really old. I don't know if either of these attributed to the little girl or what. 
about eight to ten years ago, my family moved into a small house in Beech Grove, Indiana. It was a two-story house with a basement. Our basement was used as a playroom for me and my two siblings. It was shaped in an odd way, almost like a horseshoe. It had a divider wall running horizontally down the basement. One side was a playroom, and the other had our washer, dryer, and storage space. This storage space was creepy as hell, and no one liked going back there. It was straight out of a horror movie, dark, with only a single light bulb in the centre of the room, that had a pull string dangling and worn colours on the walls. The best part is that on the other side of the thin divider wall was the kids' playroom. Anyway, one day my dad gets kidney stones, and at around 9pm or so, he decides he needs to go to the hospital. My mum asks if I wanted to come along with them and my siblings, and I say no, because I'm really into the racing video game scene that I'm playing. So I'm playing my game without a care in the world, and I finish up a race close and whistle to myself as if to say, whew, that was a close race. Then I hear it. My whistle responded back to me from the other side of the divider wall. At first, I thought it was just an echo, so I whistled something more complicated. Almost immediately, it whistled back. I kept whistling and heard mimic responses for a solid two minutes. I finally got freaked out and ran upstairs and locked myself in the bathroom. When they finally got home and found me locked in the bathroom crying and freaked out, they believed me when I told them. They tell me Dad has always felt uneasy in their house, but didn't want to say anything to not scare us kids. There was nothing that could be done, so we all went our separate ways to bed. Later that same night, my mother was awoken by my dad swaying his leg back and forth moving the bed. She looked at him and asked why he was doing it. He said he couldn't help that, and that they were rocking the bed. She asked who they were, and he told her, the people around our bed, don't you see them? She didn't see anything. Needless to say, we do not live there anymore. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's instalment. If you did, it would be so awesome if you could drop a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. That always helps and goes a long way. I've seen a few comments say, but why does it help? So I'm going to briefly explain it. You see, YouTube picks up on the interaction you leave on a video. Let's say you really like a video. If you leave a like or drop a comment, YouTube sees that. And they know that you've seen the video or a part of it if you haven't seen all of it. And the more interaction a video gets, the higher its interaction score, I suppose. And they take this into account along with how long you watch for and a whole load of other factors. And that will determine how well they rank your video. Now, that is a very ambiguous term, but from what I understand, it means that it's more likely to be promoted to other subscribers who perhaps watch a bit more infrequently to appear on the right hand side as a related video and all kinds of stuff. So it's just generally better for everyone if you drop a like and leave a comment because it helps me, it helps your fellow subscribers get notified and it keeps the channel ticking and letting me be able to produce the content that you enjoy. So if you liked it, please drop a like. You know it would be amazing if, if we hit a thousand likes, right? don't think I've hit a thousand likes in under 24 hours before, so that would be pretty impressive. Let's see if we can do that. I'd be super grateful if we could. Um, if there's a story that you'd like to share, don't forget that you can email it to me or post it to my Reddit. Either are fine, and they should be released in a video shortly. 
But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.